Dear listeners, tonight I invite you to step into a dream world where the whispers of ancient spells and the shimmer of enchanted shoes weave together a tapestry of mysteries and unparalleled adventures. Sit back, close your eyes, and let the story carry you away to a magical village nestled in a lush, emerald valley. Here, secrets are guarded by towering oaks, and sacrifices made by brave hearts light the way through dark and foreboding castles. Embrace the journey as we uncover the legends and wonders of this enchanted realm. The Magic Shoes of the Elves A Tale of Magic and Bravery Nestled amidst undulating hills and ancient oak trees, in the center of a verdant valley, was a charming village home to leprechauns. This village was a magical spot, with its quaint thatched cottages and cobblestone streets. Situated at the heart of this picturesque village was a modest workshop, emanating the comforting aroma of wood polish, and leather. This area belonged to Seamus, an accomplished cobbler whose work was well known across the community. Seamus was not just any cobbler. He was an artisan of unmatched talent. His hands, weathered from years of meticulous work, moved with a precision and grace that seemed almost magical. He could take the roughest hide and transform it into a work of art, each stitch a testament to his dedication and skill. But Seamus was not content with merely making fine shoes. He dreamed of creating something extraordinary, something that would bring unparalleled joy to his fellow villagers. One quiet evening, as the sun set and cast a golden hue over the village. Seamus found himself inspired by the laughter and merriment of his neighbors. The leprechauns, with their mischievous grins and twinkling eyes, loved to dance and play, their spirits as light as the breeze that rustled the leaves of the ancient oaks. Watching them, Seamus conceived an idea that would change the village forever. He would create a pair of shoes so special, so magical, that they would embody the very essence of joy and freedom. Seamus worked tirelessly, day and night, driven by a vision of shoes that could grant the wearer extraordinary agility and speed. He carefully selected the finest materials, each piece chosen for its strength and beauty. The leather was soft, yet durable, the color of rich mahogany. The soles were crafted from a rare, flexible wood found only in the deepest parts of the forest, light as a feather, yet incredibly strong. Seamus infused the shoes with enchantments, whispering ancient spells passed down through generations of cobblers. Finally, after many long hours and countless stitches, the shoes were complete. They were a marvel to behold, their sleek design and intricate details, a testament to Seamus's skill and passion. But their true magic lay in what they could do. When worn, these shoes bestowed upon the wearer the agility of a deer and the speed of the wind. They could leap over rivers, dart through forests, and dance with a grace that defied gravity. The shoes were nothing short of miraculous. As soon as word of Seamus's creation got out throughout the hamlet, all the leprechauns were dying to see the magic of the charmed shoes. Finn, a young leprechaun, well known 
for his tremendous energy and love of adventure, was the first to test them. There was a surge of excitement in the crowd as he put the shoes on. Finn took a hesitant step, then another, and then all of a sudden he was moving, darting and twisting with amazing quickness and dexterity. The people gasped in shock as Finn did almost impossible acrobatics, his movements a whirl of color and motion. The enchanted shoes became the pride of the village, a symbol of their unity and happiness. Villagers of all ages took turns wearing the shoes, their laughter and cheers filling the air. They danced and leaped with a joy that was infectious, their spirits soaring as they experienced the freedom and exhilaration the shoes provided. The village thrived like never before, the enchanted shoes bringing prosperity and joy to all who wore them. Children raced through the meadows, their feet barely touching the ground, while elders found themselves moving with a grace they hadn't known in years. The shoes seemed to have a life of their own, responding to the wearer's slightest movement with perfect harmony. Every festival, every celebration, was marked by the sight of villagers dancing and leaping with unrestrained joy, their laughter echoing through the hills. Seamus watched with pride and contentment as his creation brought so much happiness to his community. The village, once just a peaceful haven, had become a place of magic and wonder, a beacon of happiness and harmony. The enchanted shoes were more than just footwear. They were a symbol of the village's spirit, a testament to what could be achieved when skill, passion, and a little bit of magic came together. And so, in the heart of the leprechaun village, the enchanted shoes became a cherished part of their lives, a source of endless joy and celebration. Seamus, the humble cobbler, had not only created a pair of magical shoes, but had also woven a new thread of happiness into the very fabric of the village, ensuring that laughter and merriment would echo through the hills for generations to come. One fateful night, as the moon hung high and full in the sky, casting an ethereal glow over the peaceful leprechaun village, a dark presence loomed on the outskirts. In the shadow of the ancient oaks, a malevolent figure watched with narrowed eyes, his heart blackened by envy and malice. This was Malachi, a wizard whose heart had long been consumed by dark desires and bitter jealousy. Malachi had heard of the enchanted shoes and the boundless joy they brought to the villagers. The sight of their happiness, their carefree laughter and graceful dances filled him with a burning rage. He could not bear to see such light and joy when his own heart was so filled with darkness. As he stood there, hidden among the shadows, a wicked plan began to form in his twisted mind. The village, unaware of the danger lurking nearby, continued with their evening revelries. Children played and giggled in the soft glow of lanterns, and the elders shared stories and laughter around a crackling fire. But as the night deepened, an unnatural chill began to creep into the air. The moonlight, which had seemed so bright and welcoming, now cast eerie, elongated shadows across the village. Malachi waited until the deepest part of the night, when the village had fallen into a peaceful slumber. 
silently, he moved through the darkness, his eyes glinting with malicious intent. He muttered incantations under his breath, his words laced with the bitterness and anger that had festered within him for so long. With a flick of his wrist, he cast a powerful curse over the village, a curse that would steal away their joy and plunge them into despair. The curse spread like a dark cloud, enveloping the village in an oppressive gloom. The air grew thick and heavy, and a deep, sorrowful silence fell upon the village. The once vibrant and lively streets now seemed cold and empty. The villagers, still asleep, were blissfully unaware of the tragedy that had befallen them. Under the cover of darkness, Malachi made his way to Seamus's workshop. The door creaked open, and Malachi stepped inside, his eyes scanning the room with a greedy gleam. There, displayed proudly on a wooden shelf, were the enchanted shoes. Each pair, carefully crafted by Seamus, now lay vulnerable and unprotected. Malachi's lips curled into a sinister smile as he reached out and gathered the shoes, their magical essence pulsing faintly in his hands. One by one, Malachi stole every single pair of enchanted shoes. He moved swiftly and silently, like a shadow in the night, ensuring that no villager would wake to stop him. As he gathered the last pair, he cast a final, spiteful glance around the workshop, satisfied with the destruction he had wrought. With the swirl of his dark cloak, he disappeared into the night. The stolen shoes clutched tightly in his grasp. Morning came slowly, the first light of dawn struggling to pierce through the heavy pall that hung over the village. The villagers awoke, their hearts heavy, and their spirits dampened by an inexplicable sorrow. It wasn't long before they discovered the full extent of Malachi's treachery. The enchanted shoes, the very source of their joy and agility, were gone. An air of despair settled over the village, and the once lively streets fell silent. The children, who had once raced through the meadows with joyous abandon, now moved slowly and listlessly. The elders, who had danced with a newfound grace, now felt the weight of their years pressing down upon them once more. The laughter and music that had filled the air were replaced by an eerie silence, broken only by the occasional sighs and murmurs of disheartened villagers. Seamus, the cobbler whose creations had brought so much happiness to the village, was devastated. He stood in his empty workshop, his heart aching with the loss. The shoes had been more than just footwear. They had been a symbol of hope and joy, a testament to the magic and spirit of the village. Now, that light had been snuffed out, and in its place lingered a deep and abiding sorrow. The village, once a beacon of happiness and harmony, had become a place of shadows and silence. Malachi's curse had done its work well, plunging the village into a state of despair from which it seemed there could be no escape. As the days passed, the villagers could only hope for a way to reclaim their stolen joy and break free from the dark spell that bound them. In the wake of the village's despair, Seamus, the skilled cobbler, and his brave daughter, Isling, were determined to restore the lost happiness. The curse cast by the malevolent wizard Malachi 
had plunged their once vibrant village into sorrow. But Seamus and Isling were not ones to give up easily. With a shared resolve and a glimmer of hope, they embarked on a perilous journey to break the curse and retrieve the enchanted shoes that had brought so much joy to their home. The morning they set out was shrouded in a thick mist, the sun's rays barely piercing through the heavy fog. Seamus, his tools packed in a sturdy leather satchel, and Isling, with her bright eyes and fierce determination, stepped beyond the familiar boundaries of their village. Their path led them into the heart of an enchanted forest, a place whispered about in legends and tales of old. With its towering trees and intertwined branches that created a canopy that seemed to vibrate with electricity, the forest was alive with wonder. The air thickened with the aroma of pine and moss as Seamus and Isling descended farther, and the gentle glow of bioluminescent plants illuminated their path. Even with its beauty, there was a hint of danger lurking in the shadows, a constant reminder of Malachy's evil magic's menacing presence. Their first real challenge came as the path through the forest narrowed and twisted, leading them to a clearing where the light barely touched the ground. Here, the shadows seemed to move with a life of their own, whispering in voices too low to understand. Eiling, always the more intuitive of the two, sensed the trap before they stumbled into it. Sinister shadows, conjured by Malachy's dark magic, crept closer, their forms shifting and changing, ready to ensnare the unwary travelers. With a quick motion, Seamus pulled a small vial from his satchel, a potion of light he had crafted for just such an occasion. He threw it to the ground, and a bright, dazzling light exploded from the point of impact, dispelling the shadows and giving them a clear path forward. Isling's heart pounded in her chest, but her resolve only strengthened. She took her father's hand, and together they pressed on. The forest gave way to mist-covered hills, each ascent steeper and more treacherous than the last. The mist clung to their clothes and made the ground slippery underfoot. It was as if the very landscape conspired to impede their progress. Yet, with each step, Seamus and Isling found their determination renewed. They climbed hand in hand, pulling each other up when the path became too difficult, their bond growing stronger with each challenge. On one particularly arduous climb, they encountered another of Malachy's cunning traps. A seemingly harmless patch of flowers turned into a snare, vines shooting out to entangle their feet and pull them to the ground. Isling, quick thinking and resourceful, remembered a charm her mother had taught her. She recited the incantation softly, and the vines recoiled, releasing their grip. Breathing heavily but unharmed, they continued their journey. Night fell, and the hills grew darker, the mist thicker. The stars were obscured, and the moon was a faint glow behind a veil of clouds. Seamus and Isling found a small, sheltered cave to rest for the night. They built a fire to keep the cold at bay and shared a simple meal. As they sat by the flickering flames, Seamus told stories of the village's happier days, and Isling listened, 
her heart warmed by the memories and the promise of their return. The journey tested them in ways they could not have imagined. They faced their fears, battled against the elements, and overcame the traps laid by the cunning wizard. Each challenge required them to rely on their wits, their strength, and most importantly, their unwavering belief in each other and their mission. The love and trust between father and daughter became their greatest weapon against the darkness. As dawn broke, they stood at the edge of a vast, foreboding chasm. On the other side lay the next leg of their journey, and perhaps the key to breaking Malachi's curse. The path was perilous, but Seamus and Aisling were undeterred. They knew that their journey was far from over, but with each step they took, they came closer to restoring the joy and happiness that Malachi had stolen from their village. After days of arduous travel through enchanted forests and over mist-covered hills, Seamus and Isling finally stood before Malachi's lair, a dark and foreboding castle that loomed ominously against the stormy sky. The castle was an architectural manifestation of Malachi's malevolence, with twisted spires and jagged battlements that seemed to reach out like claws. The air around it was heavy with an oppressive darkness, and an unnatural chill swept through the nearby trees, making them whisper secrets of fear and despair. Despite the daunting sight before them, Seamus and Isling's hearts were filled with a fiery determination. They had come too far and faced too many perils to turn back now. Clutching each other's hands for reassurance, they approached the castle gates, their faces set with steely resolve. The gates creaked open, seemingly of their own accord inviting them into the heart of Malachi's dark domain. Inside, the castle was a labyrinth of shadowy corridors and echoing halls. The air crackled with dark magic, and every corner seemed to hide a lurking threat. As they ventured deeper, they could feel Malachi's presence growing stronger, a palpable force that pressed down on them like a weight. But Seamus and Isling were undeterred. Their love for their village and their determination to break the curse drove them forward. At last, they reached the central chamber, a vast, dimly lit hall dominated by a throne of black stone. There, seated with an air of sinister authority, was Malachi. The wizard's eyes gleamed with a cold, cruel light as he regarded the intruders with contempt. His voice echoed through the chamber, a low, mocking tone that sent shivers down their spines. So, the brave cobbler and his daughter think they can challenge me, Malachi sneered. You are fools to believe you can stand against my power. Seamus stepped forward, his voice unwavering. We are here to reclaim what you have stolen and to end your curse. You cannot break our spirit, Malachi. Isling stood by her father's side, her eyes blazing with defiance. We will fight you with everything we have. For our village, for our friends, and for the joy you have taken from us. With a derisive laugh, Malachi rose from his throne. Very well, he said, his voice dripping with disdain. Let us see if you can match your words with deeds. The air in the chamber grew thick with magic 
as Malachi summoned his dark powers. Shadows writhed and twisted, forming into fearsome shapes that lunged at Seamus and Isling. But the father and daughter were prepared. Seamus drew upon the knowledge of ancient spells and protective charms, while Isling, with her quick reflexes and sharp mind, countered Malachi's attacks with precision and agility. A fierce battle ensued, the air crackling with energy as spells clashed and shadows darted. Malachi's dark magic was powerful, but Seamus and Eiling's combined strength and ingenuity proved to be a formidable force. They moved in perfect harmony, their bond giving them an edge that Malachi could not overcome. Seamus used his skills as a cobbler to craft makeshift defenses from the materials he had brought with him, creating barriers that absorbed Malachi's attacks. Isling, quick on her feet, used her agility to outmaneuver the shadows and strike at the wizard with pinpoint accuracy. Together, they were a whirlwind of light and determination, their courage shining brightly against the encroaching darkness. As the battle raged on, Seamus and Isling found their way to the heart of Malachi's power, a dark crystal that pulsed with a malevolent glow. They realized that destroying the crystal would weaken Malachi and lift the curse. With renewed determination, they focused their efforts on reaching the crystal, fighting off Malachi's attacks with every ounce of strength they had. Malachi made a last-ditch effort to overwhelm them by releasing a flood of evil energy. But Isling and Seamus didn't back down. With a single, powerful blow, they united their powers and struck at the crystal, drawing from their deepest wells of love and courage. Malachi reeled as the crystal cracked, unleashing a wave of brightness that chased away the darkness. With a cry of defeat, Malachi fell to his knees, his power broken and his spirit crushed. The castle began to crumble around them, the dark magic that held it together unraveling. Seamus and Isling, victorious, retrieved the stolen shoes and fled the collapsing castle, their hearts soaring with triumph. As they emerged into the light of dawn, they knew the curse had been lifted. The oppressive gloom that had hung over the village was gone, replaced by a sense of peace and renewal. They returned to their village as heroes, greeted by joyous cheers and grateful embraces. The villagers, once again able to wear the enchanted shoes, danced and laughed with abandon. The streets, once silent, were filled with music and merriment. Seamus and Isling had not only reclaimed the shoes, but had also restored hope and happiness to their home. The village flourished in light and joy, a testament to their bravery and unwavering love. Dear listeners, May your dreams be filled with the wonder of enchanted forests and the courage of brave hearts. Good night, and may you sleep peacefully until we meet again for another magical journey.